Sorry, LeBron. You're still the best player in the world after all. Kawhi blew it. Oh, Max is the protagonist in the tragedy. How are we feeling this morning, Max? How are you doing today? I feel great. My Lakers are hmm. still in it, Molly. Oh, your Lakers. Claim them now, New I'm Yorker. I'm a Lakers fan. Stephen A., how are we Stephen feeling? Stephen A. is a Knicks this fan. Man. Who's feeling really good today? Well, well, well I, I, I just, oh, I just want to, I just want to uh, uh, thank, uh, 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 thank Max Kellerman personally for subjecting me to mm. high quality information because what I did was take the liberty to <laughs> reach out to a couple of economists. <laughs> you know, he brought up economists during his basketball argument yesterday. So I took the liberty of calling a couple, you know, just to educate myself on the world of economics. And so, I mean, that's just two additional new sources that I have that's going to educate me about that, that, that particular portion of the world. So I want to thank Max Kellerman for bringing that up during a basketball argument thank you very very much it's very are you all into the john maynard canes now and the and the ongoing debate well, well, well i'm not all i'm not i'm, I, I'm, I'm and, not no i'm not all into them when i'm making a basketball argument but certainly when it comes to economics uh, i'm going to listen well, and, you should and rapt attention to what they have to say all right well you I'm should consider kind of broadening expanding your horizons and include you know Cross-referencing information from different. I do every day just by being with you, Max. Oh my gosh! It is hard to decipher through the information I get everywhere, including from you two, on all subjects. But let's get to it, y'all. Is trouble brewing? Excuse me, if I could speak with the Clippers, who are no longer in the bubble after the Nuggets sent them packing. So during Game Two, Montres Harrell, Paul George, get into a heated exchange. During a timeout, according to Yahoo Sports' Chris Haynes, early in the second quarter, a struggling George had committed two careless turnovers in less than a minute. The second mishap, a half-court pass to Montrezl Harrell that got picked off by Jamal Murray seconds later. Clippers called timeout. Harrell approached his teammate about this, and his lack of accountability set off the NBA Sixth Man of the Year. Max, tell me this. Are you confident that this Clippers roster, as presently constructed, can ever win a chip? Um, no, I'm not. Not after what I saw in Game 7 and actually throughout the bubble, especially from this Clippers team. But they never really got it going fully throughout the regular season either. And look, Kawhi Leonard, he choked in Game 7. And so much is, of his reputation or, or his standing, as far as I'm concerned, is based on his postseason play that I can't have him the number one player in the world after doing that, right? But Kawhi Leonard's been an extremely reliable, to say the least, playoff performer throughout his career. Before he was a superstar, while he was a star and an emerging superstar, and then since he's been a superstar, this last series notwithstanding, which for the most part he was excellent in, actually, but choked in the moment of truth. There's no two ways about it. So I'm not worried about Kawhi, really. But he obviously needs support. And his, and his Robin in this Batman and Robin scenario, Paul George, has not been able to turn the corner in the playoffs. He has consistently, Stephen A mentioned, hitting the backboard on that three-point shot. Stephen A, I had the same reaction. You was like, the, what? You, <laughs> now you're, and they, re, look, he, and it's been like that throughout his career, when you've needed Paul George most. So, since Paul George is that guy, they need a third guy. Who's, because it's not like you have two MVP caliber players when you need the most, the way Denver did with Jokic and Jamal Murray, the way the Lakers do with LeBron and AD. You need another guy, Drew Holiday or something like that. It's not like every team doesn't want Drew Holiday, but you need a guy who can create off the dribble, get his own shot, set up teammates and defend. You need a real star. Whether or not it's a superstar, it's a star, and maybe a guy who's a superstar under pressure if you have Paul George. Here's the problem, guys. You probably need to move Paul George to get him. But Drew Holiday and, and Kawhi is not enough to win a championship, right? What would you get for Paul George? So then you think, okay, are there enough other pieces on this team to move to bring in a guy like that? Does the combination of Montrez Harrell and Patrick Beverly in trades, right? Because they don't make a lot of money considering the way they produce. Can that get you something like a Drew Holiday or a third wheel who's really would be a second wheel under pressure to pair with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George? If the answer is yes to that, then you fundamentally changed your roster. So I think as presently constructed, no, they need to make a major change, something like what I just outlined. 
I disagree with you, Max. I think that I think I take a totally different view than you on this from the standpoint that I think because of the way that they performed in the last three games of this series, which ultimately sent them home, I think you keep them together. I don't think they necessarily need anything new in order to win a chip. You keep Doc Rivers. You keep that coaching staff. You keep every single one of those players, even though Montrell's Harrell is approaching free agency, and he's got some explaining to do as to why he only averaged 2.6 rebounds per game in this series when Jokic averaged 13 rebounds along with his 24 points on 51% shooting and nearly 40% from three-point range. I think that, you know, obviously Harrell has something to prove. The The biggest reason that I think that you keep them together is a couple of things. I think that Kawhi being the superstar that he is, still a top five player in the game, I think he has a lot to make up for considering the fact that this was his first, you know, venture into being that face of a franchise, that number one option with the expectations draped on his shoulders to come into the uh, Clippers organization. Well, there's but so many games I'm going to play, there's but so many practices that I'm going to attend. I'm going to be in shape, make no mistake about it, but I'm going to show up with the practice when I want to show up. I'm going to miss practices when I feel like need to miss practices, et cetera, et cetera. As a leader of a franchise, you set a very, very bad tone. If you're Lou Williams, boy, do you have a lot of making up to do. The best part of you in this series was your post-game press conference in the aftermath of losing Game 7 because he was very eloquent and candid in his assessment of what transpired, but he only averaged 10 points this series, and he was horrific from three-point range, shoot like 14%. That's not Lou Williams. This is a two-time sixth man, sixth man of the year. This brother is a star scoring the basketball. He is a professional scorer. There was no excuse for him to be as anemic as he was, other than the fact that clearly you didn't really, really want to be there. That's why they got a new nickname for you, Lemon Pepper Lou. You will understand why that transpired. You've got some making up to do. And then, of course, there's Paul George. We can't ignore the situation involving Paul George. I'm here to tell you, Max, one of the nicest dudes you'll ever want to meet in your life, impossible to root against. He is a star in this league, but nevertheless, boy, did he not show up. It was Brick City. It was a straight choke job on his part as well. And what the biggest thing about Paul George that he needs to pay attention to, Paul George is in danger. Are you ready for this, Max? He's in danger of becoming the second coming of Dwight Howard. Remember, Dwight Howard was the man in Orlando, just like Paul George was the man in Indiana. He wanted to leave. He goes to L.A., he ends up going to Houston, and then before long, he's a journeyman, Washington, Charlotte, etc. because the star that he once was, he was no more. And so because of that, everybody says they harken back to that. He should have never left Orlando. That was an ideal situation for him. They built the franchise around him. Even though he didn't win the chip, they got to the finals in 2009. And now Dwight Howard is a role player, even though I think he's doing an exceptional job in L.A. in a reserve role. And I think he's going to play a big role in this series, along with JaVale McGee and Anthony Davis, triple teaming, basically throwing a three-headed monster at Jokic on the defensive side of the floor. But in the end, what it comes down to is that if you're Paul George, okay, you were in Indiana. Then you were in OKC. Now you're in L.A. with the Clippers. And Max just said in order for this team to get the parts that it needs, even though I don't agree with you, you're talking about how you'd have to move Paul George in order to do that. So I think all of those things elevates the level of incentive. I think... 